everybody, this is day 17 of Commit, 30 days of yoga. Today's practice is all about strengthening and stretching the upper body. Stick around to the end of the video where we break down a pose from today's practice and please remember to like and subscribe. Begin kneeling at the back of your mat in Thunderbolt Pose, hands in your lap as you connect to your breath. Let's go into some neck stretches, looking over your right shoulder and then off to the left. To the right. And to the left. Chin to chest, half circles down from one shoulder to the other. Take your time moving as slowly as you want to. center, tilt your head to the right, ear to shoulder, and to the left. To center, roll the shoulders back, big circles finding lots of movement. Hands to your shoulders, draw circles forward with the elbows, bringing them up high with each turn. Release the shoulders, clasp your hands behind your back and drive them down, small back bend as you lift your chest and gaze up. your hands as they are as you fold over your lap, raising your arms up as high as you can, opening up through the chest and shoulders, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Coming back up to seated, release the hands and make your way to a tabletop position. Fingers spread wide, fingertips pressing down. Let's rock the body front to back, warming up the wrists. side to side. Make sure we're pressing through our fingertips so that we're not bearing all of our weight down onto the wrists. Good. Continue here or rotate your hands, fingers pointing towards you. Once again, finding some movement front to back. Side to side. Reset your hands to start position. Send the right arm out to the side and needle it under the body coming to rest on the right shoulder and side of the head in a twist. Pressing back up to table, extend the left arm out to the side, needle it under the body, coming to rest on the left shoulder and side of the head.
returning to table, keep the hips stacked above the knees as you walk your hands forward and lower the chest down to the mat in an extended puppy pose. Connect your forehead down to the mat or gaze forward, chin down, if your mobility allows. You don't need to stay still here. You can work this back then, finding a little bit of movement to shimmy down a little bit deeper as your flexibility increases. out of the pose. Onto our forearms now. Curl the toes under and raise the knees to a dolphin pose. Strong through the shoulders, gazing back towards our feet. If you can, you can walk your feet a little bit closer towards your arms. And it's okay here if your heels don't touch down. Lower the knees and press back to child's pose. Hips over heels, relax the lower back, taking the arms to rest at the sides of the body. Lifting the body to kneeling, take a deep breath as we move forward to a dolphin plank or forearm plank. Forearms parallel to each other, palms flat, gaze down, squeeze the core tight and tighten up throughout the entire body. Deepen your breath. the knees, press back to child's pose. Coming through table to downward facing dog, walk out the heels. We're going to move from down dog to plank three times, coming forward, strong plank, squeezing the core, press back to down dog. Two more times to plank, down dog. Last one to plank. Pressing back to down dog. Let's come through plank now. Arms tucked into the sides of the body. We're going to lower slowly all the way down to our belly. Press up to cobra. And make your way back to down dog. Doing that again, you can repeat the same movement to lower or lower to chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog to downward facing dog. We're going to do that two more times. Feel free to modify if you prefer to lower and cobra. Chaturanga, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Last one, to plank, lower down, up dog, down dog. Return to plank, keeping the right hand down, open up to side plank facing the left side. Coming through plank to side plank facing the right side, left hand down. Return to plank and lower down to your belly. Send your right arm straight out to the side at shoulder height. To open wing pose, let's step that left foot over and back behind the right leg, opening up the body to the left side, stretching through the right chest and shoulder.
release, returning to your belly. Let's do that on the other side. Extend the left arm. Step the right foot over and back, opening up the body to the right side, stretching the left chest and shoulder. Release, returning onto your belly. Arms at your sides, palms facing up. We're going to be going into locust pose. Big inhale. On your exhale, lifting the chest and legs. Pointing long through the toes, gaze forward. Try not to hold your breath in this position. Keep it steady. Lower down. Let's do that one more time. Big inhale, exhale, and lift. And lower down. Let's press back to child's pose. Come through table to downward facing dog. Gaze towards your hands and you can either walk or hop to meet your hands, crossing your feet at the ankles and coming to seated in staff pose, legs extended together ahead of us. Arms down at your sides, plant the palms, and point the toes, raising the heels, hovering them just above the mat. Let's draw our hands back just a little bit now behind the hips. Big inhale and on the exhale, we're gonna press through the hands and raise the hips to an upward facing plank or an incline pose, gazing up. As much as you can here, try to touch your toes down to the mat. release. Make your way to seated in an easy, comfortable position. We're going to wrap our arms in an eagle position, bending the elbows, taking them to shoulder height, palms facing each other. Let's place our right arm over the left, wrapping the forearms with the goal of touching our palms together. If you can't touch the palms together, that's okay. Just reach as best you can. Make sure to keep the upper arms parallel to the mat as you widen through the shoulder blades. Unravel, let's do that on the other side. Left arm over right. Again, making sure to keep those elbows lifted without dropping them down towards our chest, keeping the upper arms parallel to the mat. And release the arms. Let's get ready now to go into a cow face position. If this is a pose that you're not familiar with, be sure to stick around to the end of the video where we break it down. Taking our knees up now, feet together. Let's draw the right foot under the left leg and position the left leg over the right. Now this may take some time to achieve. You may need to wiggle a little bit to get into it, but the goal is to stack the knees one above the other at your sides they should each be about equal distance from your hips. Place the back of your left hand along your back up high reaching up between your shoulder blades as high as you can. Raise the right arm straight up, bend the elbow to reach your right fingers towards your left fingers. If you can, clasp hands. If you can't, just actively reach your hands towards each other. Sit up tall here 
and avoid folding forward in the body or leaning the head forward to be able to grasp. Release the right arm, release the left arm, and return your legs to that starting position. Over to the other side, take the left leg under the right now, right leg over left, aim as much as possible to stack the knees one above the other. Position your right hand against the back as far up as you can, raise the left arm straight up, bend the elbow reaching the hands towards each other, clasping if you can. Sit up tall, chest lifted, gaze forward. Release the left arm, then the right, and then take your legs to an easy, comfortable seated position, hands on your knees or folded in your lap as we take a few deep breaths to finish up. center midline of my body. Good. So the foot is going to come to the outside edge of the opposite hand. Next I'm going to take the other leg and stack it over top. And now the goal here, there's two. We're going to try to line up the knees, one directly above the other. And we don't want this foot sticking out to the side here and then this one pulled in, tucked in close to the hip. We actually want our feet to be the same distance from the hips on either side. So that means that the leg that's on top is going to have a bit of a deeper stretch and that you're going to have to tug on that foot just a little bit more to make sure that it's equally distant from the hip as this foot is on this side. So pulling that in, again like I said we're going to make sure that those knees are stacked. And there we have the legs. For the upper body, we're going to sit up tall, get long through the neck, draw the shoulder blades down and back to start. This is where we're going to begin. Now, the leg that's on top, I'm going to have the opposite arm on top, or upright. And so, whichever leg is on top, so in this case it's my right leg, I'm going to take my right arm and I'm going to send it up my back with the back of my hand against my back, between the shoulder blades as high as I can bring it. And I'm gonna turn around in a second so you can see what's happening there. The opposite arm, so in this case my left arm, is gonna go straight up. So nothing's happening in my shoulders here. If you notice, they're not coming up towards my ears and I'm not folding the body forward at all. So, trying to keep everything down just like I prepared myself. I'm gonna raise this arm without popping the ribs, without raising the shoulder. It's just a rotation. And once it's straight up, we bend the elbow. And if you can, clasp your hands. If you can reach, you clasp. And you tug just a little bit to open up this side. So if you notice, there's a really, really deep stretch happening along this side chest. Under the arm, we're really opening up. And on the opposite side, you'll notice a really, really strong internal rotation in the shoulder. And that's something that might become a little bit uncomfortable if you're not accustomed to it or if you don't have that mobility yet. Good, so we're gonna sit up tall and we're gonna gaze straight forward. We wanna make sure that this isn't happening. So if we have to hunch forward or pull the head forward in order to reach our hands together, then we're not quite there yet. So we really want to avoid that. You're gonna sit up tall. And if your fingers don't touch, if your hands don't reach, all you're gonna do is just actively reach them towards each other without actually clasping. So I'm gonna turn around so that you can see that. So reaching up as high as I can with that hand, opposite arm comes straight up. And then we're just bending at the elbow to see 
see if we can reach. And if we can, we clasp. And you'll notice as soon as I clasp, that internal rotation deepened quite a bit and I opened up a lot more here. I didn't fold forward, I kept the back straight and my gaze forward. Excellent. So again, if we can't touch, if we can't reach, we're just going to simply actively continue to reach while sitting up straight and maintaining that proper alignment. Now, something that might help you reach a little bit further is as you're bringing this hand up behind the back, you might want to take the opposite arm and draw the elbow in just a little bit. Being really, really careful and moving really, really slow when it comes to mobility. And then you'll notice it's a lot easier to hold on. So that's one option. Another option is using a strap. You're going to hold it in your top hand. So bottom hand comes up behind the back. Top hand reaches up. And as you fold, you're going to reach for that strap. And actively try to deepen the stretch. So if you can, you can walk your hands a little bit closer together here, holding firmly on the strap, opening up the chest. Good. Now, if that's really uncomfortable for you, if you find that that's too deep of a rotation here, another option that's a little bit lighter on that internal rotation is to just clasp opposite elbows or even opposite wrists in this position behind the back. Another option for the hands behind the back, if you want to deepen that internal rotation, but you don't want to raise that arm up overhead, maybe you have, maybe you have an injury or some mobility issues that prevent this motion in the shoulder. Another way to, to do this, but to also like really deepen that internal rotation would be to do a reverse prayer pose, which is palms together and then rotate up. And then again, we sit up tall, lift the chest. Good, and that's a really, really beautiful variation as well. So lots of variations for the arms there behind the back. Ultimately, if none of those really work for you, you can keep your hands down on your feet at your sides. You can stretch both arms up and maybe hug your elbows here, just as long as you're still sitting straight up tall through the body because that contributes to this hip stretch as well. So both arms up. You can go into a tricep stretch here instead, so pulling on just the elbow, just lightly, just gently to open up that thigh a little bit more. And then when you switch your legs to the opposite side, you can do the other arm. And then always there's the option to go into eagle arms, which is this nice little wrap. And if we're doing that, we want to make sure that our triceps stay parallel to the mat that we're not pulling them down here. So this is not what we're doing, we're pulling them up here. And that we're really getting wide across the upper back. You can also bring your hands to a prayer pose in front of you if you wish. Really whatever your arms feel like doing. We talked about what the stretches are in the upper body. On one side we're opening up, and on the other side it's an internal rotation. So make that a priority to work either one or the other. If you can't do both, if you the original pose. Um, otherwise, really just do whatever you want with your arms. If it's the legs that you don't want to hold in this position, take the liberty to sit any way that you find most comfortable. So you can come to an easy pose. You can come to a bound angle. We can stack the feet in this bound angle pose to lower the knees even deeper. We can Stack the legs here in this fire lock position, which gives a really, really nice stretch. You can even sit in a hero pose, which is bringing your feet to the sides of the hips, just like we were doing in the original cow face pose, but without that super, super deep pull over to the side. So we're getting an internal rotation through both hips here in this position and it can still feel really good. Thunderbolt pose, sitting up on the heels, just like this, and in which case, you can still go into that stretch, or curl the toes under and get a nice stretch along the arches of the feet at the same time. 
So the options are endless. This, there's a lot going on in cow face pose. So take whatever modifications you need until you're able to incorporate both the legs and the arms, what's happening through the entire body. Remember that this is a more advanced pose. It is gonna be easier for some people than others, depending on your natural range of motion in your upper body and throughout your hips. So be patient with your body, be patient with yourself, listen to what your body is telling you, and practice, practice, practice. So obviously when we're following a yoga video online, we might not get all of the modifications that we need or that we want. And we might not know all of these different options that we have for these poses. So it's really important just to listen to your body and what it wants to do. And as long as you're stretching in the general vicinity of what the original pose is supposed to be, if it feels good in your body, then you can't really do anything wrong there. Um, if something feels unsafe, if it hurts, if it's too tight, if you have to really, really force it to get it, then, then maybe you want to hold back and just think about different ways or maybe even just look up modifications that you can do if you don't have a teacher in front of you who can show you some different options.